the 2017 Audi TT RS. Now this is one I've been looking forward to. Every moment tonight, they lend me to you. Why don't you come sit next to me? Let things happen naturally, like it used to be. Question is, what's it like to drive? And should you consider buying one? Well, let's find out. So allow us to cut directly to the chase. The engine. It's why you buy one of these. And this one's not standard either. It's got the stage one tune on it, along with a few other bits and bobs. And the result is, as near as makes no difference, 500 horsepower. Now I don't have the exact stats, but to drive it feels every bit as quick as my old Stage 1 GTR. And that's really saying something for a little TT. Now equally as impressive as the outright grunt that this thing's got, is the way that it can access that power at any given moment. You can just be bumbling along in comfort as we are now, drop the hammer and allow me to explain what's going to happen next. You're going to get a deep bellow from the exhaust and you're just going to be catapulted into the horizon. So the combination of Michelin Pilot Sport tyres and the Haldex based Quattro all-wheel drive system that the TT has means that no matter what the weather, you can still use all that power, which is really handy if you live in the UK. So this is a hugely confidence inspiring car, you can probably see that. You sit here, you have your dual clutch box, you've got your enormous brakes, you've got your all wheel drive quattro system. You feel like Michael Schumacher. That could be a bit of a problem though because for an inexperienced driver it's going to lull you into that sense of security isn't it? And I'm sure if you push too hard it is a powerful car, it is going to bite back. Now one thing that helps bring that confidence into the mix is the enormous brakes that this car has on it. They're really really powerful, even in a state of tune beyond this car, I don't think you would need to go upgrading them. Certainly at quick road pace, I've not had any brake fade, they perform perfectly. As for the actual brake feel, the pedal is really nice, it's not overly assisted, which is a bit of a common trend in newer cars. However, you start to press on that brake, it bites really quick near the top of the pedal, and it's a very smooth, progressive action through the throw. It's really good. Helping along that five cylinder engine is the seven speed dual clutch that you're going to find in the TTRS. And honestly, I can pay it no higher praise than to say, you just don't even consider it. You find yourself not even thinking about what it's doing because it's always on the ball and it always seems to have the right gear at the right moment. Now my background driving some of the older single clutch Ferraris, which is granted the other end of the scale from a bang up to date dual clutch gearbox, but even something like the earlier Nissan GTRs has nothing in the way of refinement that this seven speed box does. With those cars you kind of make account for them, that they're going to get a little bit confused, maybe jump into the wrong gear as you're crawling, can be a bit jerky, take a minute to shift. With this, there's nothing. Absolutely seamless. Once you get yourself over that amazing engine, that amazing gearbox, I did say there was a lot to love in the TTRS, I wasn't lying. Next thing you're going to notice is the way that this thing turns into bends. The progressive rack means that small inputs make big directional changes, so you kind of wind up avoiding being cross-armed like you do in something like a Gen 1 R8. Now the rack is a little bit devoid of feel, but let's be honest, that's not a shock, that's just a trait of modern cars nowadays. So this car is on a fixed spring and fixed shock, no mag ride or adjustable suspension here. And whilst it is firm, you can probably tell that from the way the camera is bobbing and weaving, it's perfectly livable, it's not crashy in the slightest. And to be honest, I think the suspension may be one of the more underrated parts about the TTRS. Now the dampen is just as refined as the rest of this car and it keeps it in utter compliance. Often when you've got a shocks rebound set up in such a responsive way as this car has, it can become a bit skittish, but it's just not the case in this package. 
and I use that word carefully, package, because to me, that's what this car is. It's an overall dynamic package. If we start to deconstruct it and look at the individual elements that make it up, you're gonna come across a few flaws. But this car's true party piece is the way in which other elements of the car disguise those flaws so well. Let me explain. Its slightly high body and short wheelbase is kept agile by those firm springs that we spoke about. Those firm springs are kept in line by the unbelievable amount of grip offered by the Quattro system. The Quattro system is kept powered by that immense, powerful engine that's going to overcome and hide any sort of drivetrain loss. I could go on and on. It's a bit like being punched in the face, but then immediately taken out for lunch to make up for it. Deconstructed, yes, there are shortcomings, but as a dynamic package, wow. You know what though? Here's the biggest thing this car manages to make up for, the badge. You see, in years gone by, the TT had become somewhat of a culmination of things disliked by petrol heads. A bit too cutesy with not enough drivability to back it up. This TT RS, however, is something wholly different. And if anyone says otherwise, well, you could always race them. Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do go ahead and give it a like and consider subscribing. May I next suggest you watch my buyer's guide on this very car.